right, we're live now. I'd like to call the meeting to order for October the 5th, 2021. Uh, of, uh, I'd like to have a call uh, for District 1, that's JW, that's me. Uh, District 2, Joyce. Okay. Here. Here. Right. Uh, Hubbard will not be here. He said he'd be a little late. Uh, Pearl Hollis. Pearl Hollis, she's not here. Uh, Mrs. Matt, Matt, Mattis, she here? I'm here. All right, so we do have a, let's see, one, two, three. We do have a quorum. We got three, right? right. So uh, the I'll next thing Pearl. is I'll uh, Pearl. approval of the, pardon me? Uh, this is Joyce. What's I that? just said I will text Pearl to make sure everything, you know, she's able to get on. Okay. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. But I would like to, like to somebody to, uh, 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 make the approval of the minutes for, for September, September minutes. I, I read them over. Did everybody get a chance to read them over and want to approve them or have Mr. something? Vice Chair, to... Pardon Mr. Me? Vice Chair, yes. we, we did not read the, uh, the rules and regulation for the meeting. Do you have the script? Well, if you want to read it, you, if you have the script, you can read it for me. Okay, one moment. It looks like Pearl Hollis has joined us. Oh, okay, because I was going to text her, okay. <clears throat> you ready? Okay, go ahead, Lauren. Okay. <clears throat> Planning Commissioner, I would like to call the October the 5th, 2021 meeting of Stone City of Stonecrest Planning Commission to order. At this time, I would like to ask everyone to please silence or turn off cell phones. The Planning Commission is a recommended body to the Mayor and City Council, and we use these standards as guidelines in conjunction with the public hearing to assist us in formulating a recommendation to the Mayor and City Council. The presiding officer will call cases on the agenda for public hearing First, the presiding officer shall recognize the community development staff to provide a summary of the application and present any recommendations or results of investigation. Staff shall then make a presentation of the case after which members of the planning commission may ask questions of staff or other city representatives providing the report or recommendations. The applicant shall receive a period of 10 minutes to present their case. The time is kept by planning assistant. The applicant may choose to use their entire allotment or reserve time from their 10 minutes for rebuttal. Any member of the hearing body upon recognition by the presiding officer may ask questions of the applicant or agent of the application. The period of question from planning commission is not deducted from the applicant's 10 minutes period. Opposition is granted a time period of 10 minutes per application at the public hearing to present data, evidence, and opinions. If a large number of people wish to speak in opposition, it is advisable to designate sports persons to make the presentation. Those wishing to speak must complete a Stonecrest public comment 
rule sheet before speaking and submit it to the secretary. The city is not obligated to provide the full 10 minute period to opponents if they elect not to use their time and the opposition is not guaranteed a rebuttal period. Any member, member of the hearing body upon recognition by the presiding officer may ask question of any person given public comment. After completing this process, the presiding officer will indicate that the public hearing is closed. Upon closing the public hearing, the planning commission can no longer be addressed by the applicant or opposition. At search time, the presiding officer will call for a motion and if properly second, will call for a, for a vote on the matter. The presiding officer will then state the vote and recommendation for the record. I will ask that all present act courteously and to refrain from outbursts or comments from the audience. Mr. Chair, Vice okay. Chair. Uh, should we take a, uh, take a roll call again? Yes. It's WED, District 2. Joyce Walker here. Miss District 3. District 3, he's he's working, he's he's absent. District 4. District 4. Pearl Hollis. District 5. Here. So we do have a quorum. Is uh, Miss Hall, uh, Commissioner Hollis, on the call? No, she's not. She's not. I didn't hear her. We can see her, but I don't know if she has audio. Okay. We can tell that she's on the call. Okay. Right. I see Thank if you. B. Hollis on here. Okay. Miss Hollis, can you can you can you respond so we know your mic's working? Hmm. She says in the chat that she's trying to get on camera. Okay. Mr. Chair, in the meantime, may I ask that I also received a um, message from um, Eric Herbert that he will not be in attendance and therefore have an excuse absent. Oh, all right. Uh, he had informed me that it, if he would be here, he would be late. Uh, okay. Okay. So he said he possibly could be here somewhere around seven o'clock. That's what Thank he you, sir. informed me of. Uh, could we, all right. Could we have for, uh, approval of the minutes for September? You know, uh, I Mr. Chairman, are you, skipping, are you skipping over approval of the agenda, item three? Yes. And uh, as I'm looking at the agenda that I have here, it says there a uh, uh, call to order, uh, roll call, and uh, approval of the agenda. Of oh, the agenda, yeah. I thought you said approval of the minutes. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe I didn't. May I, I said heard you. agenda. I'm sorry. Okay. I recommend that we approve the agenda. Can I have September? a September? For September. Is there a second? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Let's get one more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mrs. Hollis. Uh, uh, I see Cheryl look like she's on mute. Yes, look like she is. I, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm having trouble with my computer today. Uh, okay. Now I go to, it was approved. Now I go to a- uh, I apologize, I second that motion. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, we go to a, pr a presentation with the uh, uh, Jim uh, Sebum Bell. Uh, Bell. 
All right, let me share my screen real fast. I guess, I guess first of all, you know, we uh, we always try to make sure that since this is a public hearing, the people that want to speak have an opportunity. We did get that many requests for speaking today, but for those of you that may be on the call and are curious about the meeting link, it's down here. It's 848-8326-6304, and the passcode is 813286. So again, if you wish to speak, you know, you certainly have the opportunity to, but make sure you have that chance. Uh, I want to give you just a quick pre presentation of upcoming cases um, that are pending right now. Uh, sorry, I didn't share my video. Here we go. Um, next month, or right now, I want to say that the city staff is tentatively scheduled to meet with the city council on October 14th to discuss uh, zoning ordinance tax amendments, the next round that's coming up. And we have a number of items there uh, that... Uh, will be coming to the planning commission later, either November or December, depending upon you know, how it all shakes out with council. But these will include the Arabia Mountain Conservation Overlay. We're looking at some supplemental use criteria for the agritourism. Uh, we're also gonna look at other supplemental use provisions. We'll have a few tonight, but we'll have a few more coming up. Uh, also, if you were part of the uh, uh, last special call meeting, there was a lot of discussion about transitional buffer zones between residential and industrial uses. We will be presenting more on that. And we'll also be working with the, about the, or talking about the design guidelines for the I-20 and a few modifications for the Stonecrest area overlay. Really this next meeting with council will really kind of wrap up a lot of the remaining items that were presented to you about last spring by the collaborative firm in the last you know, uh, zoning code update that came up. And we're trying to make sure we got that package and have everything in the works for your all's review as planning commission and of course approval by the city council. Um, there will be a planning information meeting tentatively scheduled for October 20th to review upcoming planning and zoning activities. And those include the cases that will be heard in November. Uh, note that your next planning commission meeting will not meet on the first Tuesday of the month, which is traditional. It'll meet on the second Tuesday, and that's because of the elections. Uh, so your next planning commission meeting will be held on November 9th. Um, the, the current cases that we've... Uh, accepted applications for that you'll see coming up. The first one is, of course, a bit of old business. If you recall last month, you all heard RZ21006 regarding 4700 Browns Mill Road, which is a proposed change of conditions for a townhouse community in RSM district. Uh, the applicant has, did held a, a public, another public information meeting in September. And I saw an email recently, I think they're planning another one in October. They're also planning to uh, offer some proposed changes to uh, recommended conditions and stuff. So I'm, we're waiting on that. That's why it's not on your agenda tonight for any kind of decision. Uh, and uh, so that'll be coming up in November. Uh, we also got a special land use permit uh, at 4460 Idlewood Park. And this is for to operate an adult daycare in a single family neighborhood uh, that's coming up. Uh, and then we also got a rezoning request and SLUP request. This will be RZ21009 and SLUP21006 at 2888 Evans Mill Road. This is where Evans Mill intersects with Interstate 20. Uh, it's a rezoning uh, from the Suncrest Area Overlay Tier 1 to change to Tier 3 and to get a special land use permit to operate a gas station and convenience store, which I think was historically on the site originally. Right now there's a tire store that's at the location. Uh, so that, that's the caseloads that we know coming up and that will be part of that public information meeting on the 20th. So uh, that concludes my presentations about upcoming cases, unless you all have any questions. Uh, Jim, I have a text from a constituent who's asking if you will repeat the past code and um, everything. For Certainly. The yeah, I'll put it back up here. It's up here on the screen. Uh, it's a meeting ID 848-8326. 6304. And then the passcode is 813286. And I can leave it up on the screen for a little bit if you all want to. And But again, that concludes my uh, presentations and um, I'm ready to turn over to the next part of the agenda. Thanks, you. Thank you. All right. For the presentation. Now the opening for uh, public comments. Mr. Vice Chair, I have received yes. no comments for tonight's meeting. 
Okay. So then we'll go to the, the min, uh, uh, approval of the minutes for September the 7th, 2021. Somebody make motion. I'm sorry, I'll offer a motion mean? that we approve the minutes for our previous meeting. Second that motion. Could I have a It's probably moved and seconded that we approve that minutes. Uh, everybody, anybody, all opposed, approve by saying aye. 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 Okay. Also, now let's go to our uh, old business. Uh, oh, wait. Well, we have the approval of the schedule for 2022. Me. Is it, you're going to, what was that about old business? It's a, it's the approval of the schedule. For, there isn't, isn't any old business? No, there's no old business, it? but before that we had the approval of the schedule for 2022. I believe it was in your pocket right after the minutes. Oh, we, uh, I see it. Uh, it. Did everybody get the, the schedule for 2022? Thank you. Yes. Did everyone get it? Can we have an approval of the 2020, 2022 uh, schedule? Somebody want to make that motion? It's on page so 38 of your agenda packet if, if anyone is looking for it. Uh, 2022 uh, uh, scheduled meet, meeting schedule, January 4th, uh, February the 1st, March 1st, April 5th, May 3rd, June 7th, July 5th, August 2nd, September 6th, October 4th, November 8th, and December 6th. That is for, it's for 2022. Can I have a motion to approve it? Yes, I'd like to motion uh, an approval, um, I mean, to approve the, um, the agenda. Uh, I don't have the... Um, it in in a package, so I can't. I can't. I'm sorry, I can't see everything because I'm trying to do my phone and you know this thing. But I'm I make a motion to approve that. I, I have seen it, and I second that motion. It was on the last page, I think, of the packet. At least that's where mine was. It's been I, do, you want, uh, do you want me to share it on the screen? No, and second it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Yeah, you can share it on the screen so they can see it. Can y'all see that? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. that, that's it on the screen. Everyone see that? Yes. Yes, we can see it. You can say it. Okay. Can I have an approval? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is everybody muted or what? <laughs> Aye. Can you hear me? And I, so it's been a, okay. yes, I, I, I district two. I'm not sure you can hear me, Mr. Hear Hedy, you, yes. can you? Okay, thank you. And district five is I. Yeah. 
right, it's been approved. Next on our agenda is old business. Do you have any old I business? Get, again, sir, we don't have any old business tonight. The uh, one matter that you all deferred at your last meeting will be brought up in November. That's that rezoning at 4700 uh, Browns Mill Road. Okay. Then we'll go to, to a public hearing. And I, oh, I opened up the public hearing. All right, let me. Um, Any, if you're ready, I'll go ahead and present RZ21007. It's your first public hearing item tonight. Okay. This is the uh, expansion of the Arabia Mountain Conservation uh, Overlay District. Uh, this is a city initiated uh, rezoning uh, that includes 17 parcels of land east of Klondike Road and Plunker Road and south of Hayden Quarry Road and north of Rockland Road. The base zoning is R100. It's currently in the Stonecrest area overlay tier five. It covers approximately 160.3 acres. Uh, there are various owners, which I'll show on the next screen. And again, the request to change uh, from the city is to move it from the Stonecrest area overlay tier five to the Arabia Mountain Conservation Overlay. This is a list of the 17 parcels that are included in it, along with a map. Uh, you'll see this area outlined in red over the zoning uh, map. Uh, as you see, the parcels vary in size from you know, roughly half acre all the way up to 42 acres. Uh, only two of the properties right now uh, have any kind of uh, what I call permit activity. And we'll talk about that coming up. But uh, one thing to also note is that many of the properties in here are also owner occupied. And owner occupied, in other words, the address of the owner matches the property address uh, that's shown there. Uh, the subject area, of course, will be removed from tier five, placed on the Arabian Mountain overlay if approved. Uh, the base zoning again of R100 would not change and the, the R100 zoning uh, allows those uses typical of single family houses. Uh, the purpose is to protect the natural character of the area and its natural resources and quite frankly, really to promote a responsible high quality development in the character area uh, in keeping with uh, the Davis, Davis and Arabian Mountain Nature Preserve, which is really one of the city's most valuable assets. Uh, this map here shows the overlay district map uh, that you have over there in that yellow area is tier five. Right now, there are only two developments like I mentioned earlier that are currently have any outstanding permits uh, in the area. One is a subdivision being built at 40, no, excuse me, 3418 Plunker Road, which is where this Red Star is located. It's 12.2 acres. Uh, it is uh, an 11 lot subdivision uh, with lots ranging in size from half an acre to 1.3 acres. And of course, this is currently being built under the guidelines of the Stonecrest area overlay. Um, there's also another uh, proposed uh, or current uh, building activity at 3350 Plunkett Road. Uh, this is the site of an historic home that's in the middle of the area. Uh, it's currently on a 42 acre lot. Uh, the historic home is being renovated and the uh, owners have the intention of opening it up as sort of a special event venue uh, where, you know, they would open up the area for, again, sort of agritourism kind of events where you could have family get togethers, maybe a bed and breakfast and that sort of thing. So what is an overlay district? Why are we changing it from one to another? You know, an overlay district is a zoning district which is applied over one or more previously established zoning districts. Again, the base or what we call base zones, and that's the R100 zone you have there. Uh, it establishes an additional or stricter standards or criteria for the areas covered uh, than those in the underlying districts. And, and there are really two reasons you do an overlay. One is to protect special features such as historic buildings, wetlands, or uh, you know, particular conservation areas such as Arabia Mountain. And Arabia Mountain Conservation Overlay is a protective overlay district. And the other reason is to promote specific development projects, misuse developments, kind of you know, being good for economic development. And the Stonecrest area overlay is promotional. It is that it is that kind of place. So really you're dealing with two different overlays that have very different intended purposes. One is intended to promote economic growth and development. And so it allows a lot of 
different uses and commercial activities. And the other one is more protective. It's intended to preserve the natural character of the area, and that's the Arabian Mountain overlay. So why is this going on? You know, what, what is the purpose and intent, again, of the Stonecrest area overlay? Again, it's promotional. Uh, it's comprised of six tiers. Uh, the area in question is in tier five, which can be found in section 3.15.2 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, it's slated as being cluster village mixed use zone. Its primary intent is to encourage single family detached residential developments with associated neighborhood commercial and office uses to serve the convenience needs of the local community in a village or cluster type concept. Uh, tier five also seeks to preserve the rural and scenic beauty of the Arabian Mountain overlay, but it, it must be noted that it does permit currently non-residential uses along Plunker Road, which are not strictly allowed under the R100 zone, but the overlay does allow you to build certain limited in, uh, office and commercial uses. Now there is provisions where those uh, office and commercial uses front and Klondike uh, and, and Rockland would not be allowed, but it would be allowed on Plunkett Road. So that's one of the big concerns the city has about maintaining the character of the area. Um, it also imposes, of course, design guidelines to ensure the development is in keeping with the look and character of the mall area. Again, though, you want the area to look like the mall area, or do you want it to look more like the rest of the Arabian Mountain Conservation Overlay? This is a map of the Stonecrest Area Overlay. Again, it's divided up into six tiers. Uh, the area in question is this, this yellow uh, piece in the middle. Uh, you know, tier one is the mall area itself, or the mall itself. Uh, and the areas along I-20, and then it kind of steps down in what I call density or intensity all the way to uh, tier six, which is a view shed district. You can kind of see it here, it's up in the I-20 area. Uh, all, everything within those tiers, of course, has the design glide, guidelines imposed on it, but each tier allows a different variety of uses and prohibits a different variety of uses. Right now, permitted uses in tier five include everything you see here over on the left-hand column you know, adult daycare, bed and breakfast, child care facilities, assembly halls, cultural facilities, uh, detached single family dwellings, office uses, personal care facilities, places of worship, retail, uh, office medical and personal service establishments so like barbershops and that sort of thing. Again, though, there is a provision that, that the office and commercial uses are not to be located in Klondike and Rockland Roads, but uh, they are allowed on Plunkett Road. Prohibited uses, there's a long list here of 21 uh, different uses that cannot be done in tier five of the Stonecrest area overlay. And that includes kennels, junkyards, tire retreading, recapping, sexually oriented businesses, go kart storage, automobile repair, hotel motel, uh, automobile sales, um, outdoor sales, pawn shops, liquor stores, nightclubs, late night establishments, car washes, self storage, funeral homes, mortuaries, crematoriums, farm equipment, supplies, and multifamily dwellings. Again, it's a fairly long list of what's not allowed, but as you see, there's, there are a number of what we consider non-residential uses that are allowed. Now, the Arabian Mountain Conservation Overlay, in contrast, uh, you know, uh, relies strongly upon what the underlying zoning classifications are. In other words, you're restricted to the R100, but you also are allowed to do certain other uses, such as recreational passive nature preserve, dog parks, bed and breakfasts, outdoor concert halls and urban gardens. So it's a little more uh, in keeping with the base zoning of R100. You don't have this provision for a long list of commercial or office uses that could be allowed there. These are the long list, much longer list of prohibited uses. And you'll see a lot of overlap with what we saw in the Stonecrest era. So many things won't change. You still cannot, for example, have sexually oriented businesses. You can't have a mortuary or crematorium. You can't have you know, salvage yards or nightclubs. You know, but there are a number of more detailed things here. In fact, there's, if you look at number 16, I thought was worded interesting as a long list of automobile related services, why it's all lumped together like that in the code, I'm not real sure, but that's the way it's shown. And of course, things like convenience stores, check cashing facilities, truck stops, warehouses, there's a long, much longer list, but for the most part, I think we would all agree these are not the kind of uses you would typically expect to see along Plunkett Road or, or that area. So it, it's certainly in keeping with the character of what's there now, which is primarily in you know, a wooded and uh, sort of agricultural area. Um, the Arabian Mountain Conservation Overlay residential requirements, you know, what is being imposed by, by adding the Arabian Mountain or this area into the Arabian Mountain Conservation Overlay is that it does preserve a lot more of green space and tree preservation in the area. Uh, it requires 30% green space, an exterior boundary buffer of 50 feet in width to go around 
you know, if you're having an R100 subdivision, for example, uh, it prohibits uh, clear cutting of the space. And of course it requires that any green space be maintained by a mandatory homeowner association. So, uh, and one other thing, of course, to keep in mind, since this is a rezoning, uh, since this city initiated doesn't follow the same standards as you require of one that's privately initiated. But, you know, one thing we always want to keep in mind when we do this is, is it in keeping with the future land use map for the area? This is what the area uh, map shows. Uh, it's got conservation, open space, uh, suburban neighborhood, and rural residential areas all in here. Uh, and in, if you look at the uh, guidelines that we lay on the packet at the packet, we do feel that uh, the proposed rezoning is indeed in, in line with uh, each of those different character areas as outlined. So bottom line, the staff is recommending approval of this. So we feel some keeping with the vision and goals of the comp plan, but it also will help preserve an important gateway to the Davison Arabia Mountain Nature Preserve. And again, will help encourage quality development in the area that's consistent with the character of the surrounding area. With that, that concludes the staff's uh, presentation and I'm open for questions. Jim, I would like to ask this and, and help me out with this, okay? Cause I'm not sure I'm understanding. Will this come every time someone wants something rezone, rezone will this come up or is this, um, well, uh, well, this will have to be approved. I noticed all the, you know, everything that was needed to be approved to be in that particular area. Is this going to be like a one-time thing or anytime someone else wants to have the thing, the same thing done, you'll have to relook at it. Well, I mean, certainly uh, private property owners can request a rezoning after this. It's we're, we're doing here is by city, city initiated rezoning is just imposing a different overlay requirements on the area. So, it, you know, it's 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 not a one time all kind of thing. I mean, I think zoning maps and zoning in general is kind of a living, breathing document. You know, you, you certainly could get requests from property owners if they don't agree with that to go uh, in, in a future date and time. But what it would do is regulate uh, or, or change what's allowed by right in the area. In other words, what we're doing is we're preserving the area for R100 development right now. We're saying that if someone owns land in there, they can request to build a single family home or anything that's allowed on the Arabia Mountain overlay. Mm -hmm. um, whereas right now, without this rezoning, they could build that, you know, a number of commercial and office uses uh, that are currently allowed in Stonecrest area overlay, which, mm -hmm. and again, they would have to follow the design guidelines of the uh, Stonecrest area overlay, which is really to make it look more like kind of what you see around the mall, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of the signage and the look and feel. So the, the question really is how, how does this align best with the vision for the community? Um, you know, do, do you all see that area being more in line with the Ravy Mountain or more in line with the Stonecrest area overlay? And so it affects development permits coming in, but it certainly doesn't preclude uh, someone in the future coming in and requesting a rezoning. They certainly could do that. Okay, thank you. Sure. Again, I'd like to share that, um, that uh, I was actually in that meeting with the community when you all presented this. So I had an opportunity to hear the uh, applicant. Uh, there were a number of people from the community on that meeting that expressed their approval um, for this particularly, uh, this particular rezoning um, from the Stonecrest overlay to the Arabia overlay. And so I think this is something that's going to benefit the community in a grave way. Um, but just not sure, are we ready to move on this or do we need to open up a public hearing about this? What is the process at this time? Uh, well, we are in public hearing right now. So th this was okay. staff presentation. So I, I think the next step is to offer up uh, anyone who wants to out speak in favor of the, of the public hearing. But I'll, I'll turn that over to the uh, vice chairman, uh, Mr. Edie, if he's ready to open it up for a discussion. Um Let's, there's no other questions for you. If they're not, then we'll turn it over to the public hearing. Anybody, any, uh, anything on, uh, from the public? I see Mr. Mrs. Cofield has her hand up. Yes, uh, I want to speak in favor of this. From the public? 
Yes. And we, then it comes back, we'll close out the public hearing. Well, uh, I want to speak. Mr. Eady, Ms. Ms. Cofield does have her hand up. She's ready to speak out. And and make a motion that we approve. Well, I would like to say something before you guys approve it. I, I, I mean, I it we're is. We're losing Mr. E's connection. I think, I'm not sure he's hearing. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak in favor of this because I happen to live, I guess you would say, across the street from it. And my position is that you we can have hear me? To, we have to do everything we can do to protect the entrance to the Arabian day, to the Arabian Mountain conservat conservatory area. We have, um, as you know, that part of Arabian Mountain. Is, and the, 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 the uh, land is the uh, farm, the barn that sits there. And that barn land happens to back up to my community. And what, what I would really like to see, I would like to see us expand the footprint, this footprint of Arabian Mountain and bring it all the way back to Woodrow or even uh -huh. as far back as Hayden Quarry, but at least to Woodrow, where Woodrow runs up from Evans Mill and dead ends to Klondike, and to include the area along, I, I guess you would have to include Evans Mill, but especially along both sides of uh, Klondike, and to go over maybe as far as Hayden Quarry, so that we can ensure that we keep it green all, all, all around and we keep it looking like the nature preserve that it's supposed to be. Now, don't forget that we also have a walking trail that goes through there. So you want people who come to the area to be able to see the beauty of the mountain before they actually, you know, see the mountain rise up, that they can understand. The how most of this land there is either along Klondike is either part of Arabian Mountain or it is single family houses. So it's, it's, it's really not a big deal. And most of us who live here, this is what we want to have. We want to be able to, this is why we moved here. And to be perfectly honest, when I moved here, what you call the farm was really a farm. There were actually cows that were on that property and every once in a while, the cows would get out at the at, and it didn't bother us at the corner of Woodrow and Woodrow, I guess you would say the people had goats. I mean, seriously, they had a bunch of goats. They would also get out. So those of us who live here, we didn't come out here because we wanted to be around a lot of commercial. We came out here because of the beauty of the area. And I, I'm in support of this project. I understand what they're trying to do. What they're trying to do is make this into like, a, 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 I guess you would say, the, the country in the city. And that's a good idea, making it a place where people can go and they can bring children. They were talking about having small groups of kids to come out and to see nature at its, its best. So I, 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 I totally support this project. I think we have to do everything we can to protect this land. And like I said, if you can take it all the way back to a Hayden Quarry, because they're almost at Hayden Quarry on that side of the street, but make sure that we protect what is there now, that we keep it green, that we keep it pretty, because that is our biggest asset. And to give you an example, I have to cross the walking trail every day when I go out. And I see people from all over. I've spoken to Ranger Robbie, and, and he's saying that people are coming from all over. And we want them to just enjoy the beauty of the area. And we want you to do everything you can to protect it. I am totally in favor of this. And uh, I also would like it if you would kind of tighten up the rules along Plunkett Road about uh, commercial businesses. Because Plunkett Road isn't that big, but anyway, uh, or that long. But that's my position, that we work to preserve this area and to keep it as it okay. is. Okay, I can get it on my phone. Can they see you? I don't know what happened. I think I just... 
And that concludes my comment, but I, I'm, I'm very in favor of this. Mr. Eady? Hello? It looked you're, like you lost him. Are you still showing up as participants? But I think he's on mute. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, this is Walker? Uh, no, all I was getting ready to say, I, I couldn't hear you, but I, I guess Ms. Cofield has spoken, so I'm sure we just need to go to the next, uh, those that may be against it, or uh, if there's any, or if they have more people that's for it. Anyone, anyone else want to speak on, on it? for it. Okay, then. Anyone? All right, so, so let me, let's close. Yeah. Close public hearing. Yes. Mr. Edie, do we want to uh, acknowledge anyone who is in opposition to it? Yes, if anyone there who's in opposition, they want to comment, go ahead. Anyone? And in that case, then we should close public hearing. Mr. Chair, I offer a motion that we close the public hearing at this time. So uh, can I, you got a second? By Pearl Hollis, second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Public hearing is closed. Uh, then I turn it over to the commissioners. Uh, what's your, your pleasure? Mr. Chair, you? Oh. can you hear me okay, Mr. Eating? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to share that um, I did listen to the meeting that Mr. Somerville hosted for the community. And as I shared earlier, we had an opportunity to hear from the owner of the property and what their vision is for the development of this property. And certainly um, I would like to support uh, this property, these 17 parcels being taken out of the Stonecrest overlay and, and placed into the Arabia overlay. So that is my concern. I mean, my, you know, discussion as far as where I stand with this. I was also on that meeting uh, uh, just for a short period of time and I would definitely support it myself. Anyone else? I also support it, Pearl Hollis. Okay, it's been- And so, Mr. Chair, I'd like to offer a motion that we approve the petition to, uh, that the staff has recommended uh, to approve it, to uh, take it from the Stonecrest overlay and place it into the Arabia overlay at this time. That is my motion. All right, it's been, motion. it's been moved and seconded that we uh, uh, approve this uh, motion. All in favor? By, by saying aye. 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 It's been, it's been moved. You're going to have to serve. It's been approved. In the email. It's not this one right here. It's not the planning commission. Yeah, it Any, is, but it may not be in that way. There's no opposing? No, sir. We had a unanimous vote for the four of us. Yes. Okay. Mr. Vice Chair, who's second? Pardon me? Who second the motion? I think, I think it that was, was Pearl Hollis. Ms. Pearl Hollis second the motion. Okay. And remember, if you're not speaking, mute your line. Thank you. Sorry. All right, we're ready for the second item tonight. Next, second item. This is RZ21008, uh, Stonecrest Estates, uh, phase one. 
The applicant is Ace Homes LLC, the are being represented tonight by Prime Engineering. Uh, the location is at 2261 South Stone Mountain Lithonia Road, 2241 South Stone, Stone Mountain Lithonia Road, and 1780 Phillips Road. Uh, the current zoning on the property is medium density residential MR1 and local commercial C1. Uh, approximate acreage is 70 acres in total. Uh, the owner is the applicant. Oops, sorry, went too far. Uh, the rezoning request is to rezone part of the C1 parcel, which is on 2241. South Stone Mountain Road to medium density residential MR1. Basically, they're just doing sort of a boundary adjustment for that one parcel. And to change the conditions uh, this imposed on the overall development, all three parcels, uh, to match a new concept plan that's in place. Uh, this, there was a rezoning on the property uh, way back in 2007 uh, under DeKalb County, uh, Z07131333. Uh, for a medium density residential development that includes single, excuse me, included a townhome, single family residential, senior living, and again, the small scale commercial that is there. Uh, currently, it's just an undeveloped wooded tract. Uh, the surrounding uses include single family residential, some commercial to the north, and a government building. There's a, uh, a health department building to the east of it. Uh, the current character area is suburban neighborhood. Not a lot. Um, the future lands map. Here's an aerial map. As you can see, it's a very wooded site altogether. Um, the current zoning is primarily MR1 with a little bit of C1. Here is the latest site plan. And I want to stress the, the site plan was uh, submitted today uh, at my request. So it is not in your current agenda packet, but we will, of course, be substituting it out uh, for whatever goes on to city council. And I did email it to the members of the commission uh, today. Uh, I want to make sure that if any conditions of the zoning, if you all either vote to approve or deny that it does refer to this site plan, which is dated October 4th, 2021. As you can see on the site plan, the C1 parcel is this little kind of uh, boot-shaped uh, parcel here in the northeast corner of the lot. These are the townhomes that are all together. And then the other part, the phase two, uh, which is uh, down here, are the single family homes. Uh, the original site plan or what's currently approved on the site right now had some senior housing over here in sort of the western corner of the lot, which is being taken out of the proposal. These are the standards of review that are required, of course, of all rezonings, and I'll just walk through each one of them. Um, the first one, of course, is conformity with the uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, the entire tract is in suburban or suburban neighborhood. Uh, altogether, it is adjacent to some industrial areas, but certainly what they're requesting in terms of uh, MR1 and the C1 is in keeping uh, with that character area. Uh, the, is it suitable in view in terms of the use of adjacent or nearby properties? The, the property is really sort of a transitional area between the single family residential and the industrial uses to the south. And the mixed use proposal that we see here uh, is really we feel suitable for the transition between the two uses. Uh, there is a reasonable economic use. Again, the, the property is currently zoned as it's being proposed. The only change is uh, dropping the senior housing component of it. Uh, but we feel like the current uh, site plan that we're proposing really is more in line with market trends. So it probably would improve the economic use of the property. Uh, zoning review in terms of existing use or usability of nearby properties. Uh, we don't feel that the use will have a negative impact on existing uses or usability of adjacent properties. It is in keeping with the character of what's around there. And one thing to note, uh, there is a large sort of wetland area uh, in the area. In fact, uh, they, this applicant was approved for a uh, stream buffer variance not too long ago by the Zoning Board of Appeals. And if you look at the site plan, there's a large area of it that is being preserved. Uh, for open space around the wetland areas of the map. And I'm sure the applicant, when he presents his case, will show you more detailed maps of where that is, which will help to serve as a buffer between the residential uses and the industrial uses, uh, potentially, that would show up on the east side of the property. Uh, there are no changing conditions that would affect either, you know, supporting grounds for either approval or disapproval. And as far as we know, there are no historic building sites or districts or archaeological resources on the site that would be disturbed. Uh, would it cause excessive or burdensome use of existing streets, transportation facilities, utilities, or schools? Again, what's being proposed is what is currently allowed on the site already, though we are, they are reducing the size of the commercial property and they are removing the senior housing components. So really the impact should be less 
uh, for on the infrastructure than what's currently allowed on the site right now. Uh, the, this development would not, uh, in our opinion, adversely impact the environmental surrounding natural resources. Of course, there's always concerns when you are dealing around wetlands and areas, but uh, or stream buffers. But uh, again, they were granted variance. Our uh, city engineer did look at the site in close to, you know, uh, scrutiny, and they did feel that what the applicant was requesting was certainly reasonable and would, would not cause a negative impact as long as they follow the stormwater guidelines that are both required by the state and the city. In conclusion, uh, staff is recommending approval of RC21. Ooh, sorry, a little typo there. Should be eight. Uh, to RSA to, again, I'm sorry. Let me correct this real fast. Uh, MR1 and C1. Uh, with conditions that the future development of the site shall be in compliance with the general concept plan submitted on October 4th, 2001. Again, that's different than what's in your packet. Uh, that a homeowner association will be established prior to the approval of the final plat for the development. Uh, that HOA membership will be a requirement of all property owners within the development. Uh, prior to issuance of any land disturbance permit, the applicant must provide evidence of legal mechanism under which all land to be held in common and used for green space purposes. Then development shall be protected in perpetuity. The applicant must uh, submit a tree save and landscape plan to the director prior to issuance of a building or land service permits. And the city engineer shall review and approve driveway locations prior to the issuance of any building or land service permits. Uh, we're also aware that a minimum five foot sidewalk be installed along the property frontage uh, on South Stone Mountain and Lithonia Road. Uh, that concludes the uh, staff's report on this. I do know the applicant is uh, available and uh, ready to make comments uh, as part of the public hearing. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, commissioners, do you have any comments, uh, uh, questions for uh, Mr. Somerville? Anyone? I don't have any. All right, so I'd like to take a motion that we open up for a public hearing. Do I have a motion? Could I have a motion? Look, look like there are no questions, Mr. Speedy. All right. And Mr. Like, Speedy, yes, sir, I'd like to offer a motion that we go into a uh, public hearing concerning this application. You have a second? I second that motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Edie, but um, uh, Ms. Pearl Hollis is asking that uh, the host let her back in. Well, I, I'm not in. Yes. The host let her back in? Y yes. Who, who is the, is it you, Mr. Edie, or is it someone else? Someone else. It's Marcy Davis, our yeah. communications officer. Hi, she's back in. Oh, thank she's you. Back in, okay. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> Thanks. Um, motion passed. Uh, that. open up the... and so we're in public comments at this time mr reading yes it's open open for public hearings we'll take all comments that are for this item anyone and i have no control here so yeah jim this is rob mcpherson is uh the opportunity for me to speak in behalf of the uh of yes sir the, this uh, is now the, uh yes mr ed this is robert pearson the applicant uh for the rezoning i think you're prepared to give a little powerpoint right uh okay. yes sir i am if that's all okay. right yep you can take it over. give me just a second to figure this thing out If you 
click the green share screen button, you should be able to take control and show your PowerPoint. Let's see if this works. While we're waiting for him to do that, I do see that there's a hand uh, from the public that's raised. Are you guys able to see my screen now? Yes, we see it. All right. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Thank you very much, Commission. I really appreciate you giving us the time to, uh, to present uh, this little short presentation regarding our request. My name is Rob McPherson, and I'm with Prime Engineering, and I represent the applicant base. And I will begin just very quickly. The, the site is located on South Stone Mountain and Lithonia Road. Uh, north of I-20, it's between uh, Lithonia Industrial Boulevard and Phillips Road or South Deshawn Road. It's on the south side of Stone Mountain, uh, South Stone Mountain, Lithonia Road. Here's a blow up of the tract. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's approximately 70 acres. On the, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not, but on the east side of the property in the northeast corner, is the East the Cab Health Center. That's probably the best landmark for where the property is located. Uh, it is located on that parcel. Uh, to the southeast is undeveloped industrial property that is uh, sort of a difficult piece to develop because there's creeks that have 150 foot buffers on it and it really is gonna be limited in use uh, for, for that purpose. To the south is single family residential. To the west is an undeveloped Parcel. It was, I think it was started as townhomes. I do not know that it's ever been completed or finished. Uh, there's a church uh, on the property that the back part of the property is near a creek and it's the detention pond area. And then immediately to the west is townhomes. And um, I think there's a child care center and some commercial on the very corner. Across the street is uh, commercial uh, and uh, some, some uh, probably light industrial or, or small. Uh, office building type, industrial buildings on that site. Here's the current zoning of the property. You can see that it is a, a mix of both the uh, MR1 for the residential piece and the uh, second portion is the commercial in this northeast corner. The uh, existing site is 70.01 acres with C1 being 3.6 acres and the MR166.4. So you can see from this that it is predominantly a, a residentially zoned property. Uh, back in the mid 2000s, the property was rezoned while it was in DeKalb County. Uh, this was the land use plan that was associated with it. You can see that in the Northwest corner, they had townhomes along this spine road here was single family residential with a commercial parcel to it. And then to the South, this cluster here was a, a bunch of duplexes for uh, senior housing and then single family residential on to the south. Uh, what we are requesting to do, this is the overall site plan. What we are requesting is, is really two things. One is we want to, because of final alignment of this, uh, of this road to, to actually make sure it intersects with the driveway across the street uh, we made a slight twist in the road here to get alignment. And then uh, we needed to slightly adjust the commercial lines. And I'll show that in just a few minutes in order to better accommodate the single family residential and work around the, the stream buffer that's in that area. Uh, so that is one of the requests that we're trying to sort of, it's really trying to clean it up so that it works, works best for the, uh, for, the, for the lot. And then the second part of it is to you know, the, the Southern has to be an all single family, the, the senior housing complex, which is quadruplexes. Uh, the current owner really doesn't want to build the quadruplex senior housing complex. He'd rather have it single family and fit in better with the, with the surrounding areas. Uh, the development does include uh, a, a nice, really a nice amenities package. It's gonna have a clubhouse with swimming pool. Uh, it's got walking trails around, uh, the, the wetlands, uh, the site used to have three ponds on it. There was a pond, a large pond in the middle and then two smaller ponds running up on the side. Those ponds were, the, the dikes of those ponds were breached 
based on aerial photos, it looks like around 2004, 2005 timeframe, and those ponds do not exist. They've just turned into to wetlands or, or have reverted back to their natural uh, conditions of what they were in the past. Um, but what we want to do is we want to build a walking trail that actually goes around the pond and around the wetlands and comes back around the commercial piece, and it interconnects with the sidewalks that will be placed within the subdivision. We've also got a small amphitheater, just I call it an amphitheater. It's really a, a, a screen on the green, if you want to call it, so that the HOA can pop up a screen and, and the neighbors can come out there and have fun together and be around each other and maybe watch a movie. And then there's a small size uh, kids soccer field in the middle uh, to allow for you know a play area for, for uh, parents of the kids to build romp around. Uh, we will have a, a pavilion and a playground as well associated with the clubhouse. And, and that's really what the, the applicant is proposing to do with the development. A little, uh, the, the acreage does slightly change. The C1 drip drops in about, a, about one and a quarter acre and the EMR increases about that same amount. And here's a blow up of the property line that's changed. This blue line that you see is the current commercial property uh, that is zone C1. And what you can see, this area here is where the creek starts. There's a little spring head here and starts to run down. And what we're, we are requesting to do is modify the property line to reflect where the red line is at. And, and as you can see, uh, this will allow single family to come up uh, to a 50 foot buffer, which is required by the city between any residential and commercial property but it creates a nice break. This will also be where the trail comes in and out of the, uh, to, to, from the sidewalk to go around and, and do your one mile loop or however many, how many ever feet it is around the property. Uh, I would also uh, just state uh, just a couple of other things. One is the uh, traffic. Uh, one of the questions that came up during the, the uh, uh, public comment where we uh, met with different neighbors was, is, are we going to see much of an impact on the streets? Uh, we do not anticipate that. We have worked with the city engineer, and what the city engineer asked us to do is to create left turn lanes, uh, designated left turn lanes to enter the subdivision. And you can see from this sheet here that there's two points of ingress and egress, and and those. Uh, I'm going to try to move over to the. Oops. Ah. Can't move it here very well. On my, there we go. Um, there'll be one lane on the on the northbound or northwest side that will be straight through, so there'll be no impairment. The same on the southbound, and then there'll be a left turn lane at each intersection, and there'll be a right decel lane for anybody turning into the development. And then there's a right in and right out of the commercial development. And those uh, were all presented to the city engineer, and and uh, they are in agreement with what we are proposing uh, should work just fine. Um, other questions regarding uh, buffers, you can see that along the uh, industrial part property and other commercial properties, we have very large, you know, 150, 200 plus foot buffers along here. Uh, this is the creek that runs out along the adjacent industrial piece over here. And you can see with this that you know, there's going to be at least 150 foot between any residential and industrial project uh, that, is, that is in the near the development. And with that, I'll open it to any questions. Thank you for your time. Okay, Mr. McPherson, Mr. Chair, I'd like to ask some questions of Mr. McPherson. Okay, commissioners, go ahead. Hi, Mr. McPherson, thank you so much your presentation. I did want to ask you with regard to this location, uh, you have road A, B, and C. Now is road B the Stone Mountain Lithonia area um, street there? No, road B, uh, let me go back to road A is this road that runs on the western side of the property. What's the name of that road? Do you know? It's unnamed at this time. It's the one we're going to be building. That's what you're going to put in. Okay. Yeah. And road B is this road here that the single family are on. Stone Mount, uh, South Stone Mount, uh, Lithonia Road is the road on the north. 
part of the spot. Okay, all right, thank you. Now, mm -hmm. how far away from the railroad track would this um, proposed site be? How far from the railroad track? Uh huh. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not aware of any railroad track uh, immediately adjacent to our property, but uh, I, I think there's one over here on the north side somewhere. Um, I'll tell you in just one second. We'll pull it right up here. If you can uh, okay. bear with me. Thank you. I would I would guess probably a couple of hundred feet if you you know if you walk to it. Um, but I don't know of any crossings that are near us. Let's see. Here's our property right here. Um, yeah. So our property is in this area here. And the railroad is, is to the north. I'll pull it in here with an aerial so you can see it a little better. Okay, thank you. All right, so here's our here's our property frontage along here. There's a gas station, a Chevron gas station, and there are these two metal buildings. Uh, I think one maybe is a wrecker or body shop. I'm not sure what's in the front. And then the railroad is behind that. So it is... Uh, by distance, it is uh, 360 feet away. I have some more questions, but I'd like to yield my time to my colleagues and if uh, permitted, I can come back with some more questions. Uh, I don't have any questions, so you can proceed. I don't. I think Pearl is back on now. I am Joyce. Thank you so much, okay. and I, I I do not have any questions at this time. Yeah, can I take a motion uh, to open up a public hearing? Can I have a motion? I'd, offer, I'd like to offer a motion, Mr. Chair, to open up for public comments at this time. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Carla, I mean, uh, Cheryl, I thought you had some more questions. Is that the late? I do, but I'm going to wait until after the public has spoken when we have oh, time okay. to come back and talk. Okay. Thank we'll you. Thank you for looking out for me, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> we will take all comments that are for this item. Any comments, public comments? Mr. Chair, I see that Ms. Spate Caulfield has her hand up. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ms. Caulfield. Yes, I only have uh, two, I guess it's two questions or two concerns. Um, there is a strong need for senior housing in this area and see senior housing, especially that is for sale. So I'm wondering if they will take any of their uh, uh, senior housing and uh, I can't start by, well, let me start my video because it, it says I'm blocked. That's what, okay. Uh, thank you because it was a problem with the video. Uh, my first question is that uh, there is a need for senior housing. And I'm assuming that these houses are, are for sale. And I'm wondering why there isn't uh, any type of uh, uh, desire to have a, a section for seniors there. And uh, my other thing is, do we know what type of commercial development will be there? Uh, will it be another gas station, a convenience store or uh, what and hopefully uh, it will be my third part is that uh, hopefully it will be uh, landscaped a little bit better than we've been seeing that we have a little bit more front landscape with uh, you know some with keeping some of the natural uh, trees and things around the area but my main concern is that why they are excluding the uh, uh, senior component because I'm assuming all of this property is going to be for sale. So that was my concern.
Any more comments? Cofield, are you finished? Yes, sir. That was a uh, that was my only concern was about the senior housing and uh, what type of uh, what type of commercial they were they were looking to put on the property. Okay, any, Mr. Any Chair, are we are we hearing from the public whether they're in favor of or opposed to this development? In well, I'm in favor of it. I, I'm, I'm in favor of it because there's a need for housing in that area. And it's it's the need for for, sing, for single family housing, which I understand this is going to be. I was just wondering uh, why they had removed the uh, senior um, the uh, senior component for it, and what type of commercial they were commercial development. But as far as building single single family housing in that area, it is much needed. So I'm in favor of it. You know. Uh, just comments for for you have comments uh, against. I'm for it. I am. I'm for it. So I mean, that was my only concern. What were they going to build for commercial? Any or other or any other comments for? No. Uh, any comments against? Anybody has any comments against? Commissioners? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to offer a motion that we close public hearing at this time on this said uh, proposed site development. Could I have a second? Second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Been approved. Aye. Public hearing is closed. The pu public hearing is closed. So, Mr. Chair, can we ask before I ask any additional questions if the applicant can address the questions uh, that was asked of the public? Oh, go ahead. Good I'll ask. Be, yeah, I'll be glad to try to answer or address your questions. As far as the commercial property, uh, at this time, we do not have any specific plans for what will be developed on that property. Uh, obviously, whatever they do decide, it is not a very large tract of land, so it won't be anything that will be very large. Uh, I would imagine it will be uh, the type of commercial that would, would be... Um, suitable to, you know, for local, you know, local commercial community use. Um, but right now the developer has not got anything identified for any fires or developer for that out parcel. Um, as far as the senior housing component, uh, the, the owners of the property basically feel like the, the need for duplex type senior housing was really just not what they wanted to build, not really what they are in business to be constructing. Uh, the single family residential is what is currently zoned and they just felt like it was a, a better use uh, to be done in that manner. As, as far as the housing, uh, it is, yes, it is single family uh, detached and single family attached with some townhomes. It's a, a combination of the two. Um, and it, you know, and it will be for sale for anybody they can get to buy it, I'm sure. Uh, and, and I think they feel like it's gonna be a very good community for the area, particularly with the amenities that they're proposing to include with. Okay, Mr. Chair, may I ask a couple of questions? Go ahead. Mr. McPherson, uh, thank you so much for answering the questions that uh, were made from the public. I do wanna ask, mm -hmm. Uh, when you had your community meeting, did you have a, a nice turnout? And if so, what was the feedback you received from the community? Uh, I felt like we had a pretty good turnout. Jill might have a better uh, answer than that. There were uh, there were about 40 people maybe on the call. 
Uh, some of them were, were staff and, and, um, and representatives of the city, uh, but there were a lot of, a lot of neighbors in the area, uh, both residential neighbors and industrial neighbors. I think overall, uh, they seem to be very supportive. Um, the types of questions we got, there were some concerns about the um, residential adjacent to the industrial, and I explained the creeks that were in the area and that those created a 75 foot buffer on each side of the creek, resulting in a 150 foot undisturbed buffer. Uh, and I also explained that the piece that the only piece that's left in there is going to be a very difficult piece to develop anyway because of the uh, existing buffers on those creeks. Um, they had questions about traffic, and, and I explained to them the basically the same answer I just provided to this, this commission. And um, I think there was uh, there was one person down on the south side uh, that had some 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 questions about drainage uh and concerns with drainage uh i actually got his contact information and tried to reach out to him and we have not been able to connect up well we were ho i was hoping we could do that yesterday but his schedule and my schedule didn't match and then he was out of town the rest of this week he said or unavailable the rest of this week uh but i explained to him that the drainage uh the mass the, the storm drainage that we're proposing includes detention ponds uh, water quality ponds. Uh, there'll be water water quality treatment coming off some of the backs of the homes, uh, so that everything that goes into the wetlands and into the creeks uh, are handled and managed in accordance with the North, the Metro North Georgia uh, Water Planning District guidelines, which is the Blue Book, which is the um, uh, the manual and the policy or ordinance. Uh, that the city has approved. So it, it meets that or exceeds that. Uh, we do not anticipate any, any concerns with drainage because it all, all goes into the creeks and or wetlands and, and uh, will be treated before it goes. And my gut feeling is at the end of the day, actually the water going into those wetlands will be cleaner because right now there's a lot of trash that's been dumping on the property over the years and, and all that will get cleaned up and, and, uh, and gotten rid of. Um, but I felt, you know, I felt like it was fairly well supported. There was nobody there against it and having done many zoning cases over the years, um, I felt like it was, you know, one of the, one of the, uh, uh one of the better, uh, zoning hearings I've, I've had. Thank you, Mr. McPherson. Um, my last question I'd like to address to Mr. Somerville. Yes, uh, Mr. Somerville, I do recall in, I'm not sure if it was the last or the previous council meeting to this one, when we were discussing um, zoning and what have you, we talked about the, um, the buffers um, and, and, you know, instead of 75 feet, possibly 150 feet buffers uh, with a total being 300 feet, is that something that's feasible? That's the first question. My second question, and that is if we could expand it to 150 instead of 75, 75, 150, 150. And then my second question would be, um, in that same meeting, I do recall specifically Councilman Clanton speaking about um, properties, residential properties that are adjacent to industrial properties. Do you foresee that being an issue or could we look into that buffer increasing to prevent that being an issue for the residences that uh, would be moving into this area? Well, in terms of what the applicant is offering here because of the, the position of the wetlands and everything that's there, they really are building in, uh, as Mr. McPherson pointed out, a, a pretty substantial buffer, um, not, which is not typical again, like right now under the zoning code, Residential doesn't have to build in a buffer next to industrial. So what the proposal that we're seeking that will be coming before you in the coming month is a transitional buffer, uh, really kind of in keeping with what's being presented here tonight. So I kind of view this as, as very, very much uh, kind of in the intent and vein of what we're proposing to go toward, which is that this residential development coming in will be offering 
uh, not only a transitional buffer in terms of a traditional wooded buffer, but also that C1 piece is really a transitional use uh, between residential and potential industrial to the east. So um, I don't know if, I mean, in my mind, in looking at this, I think because of the topo and the, and, and the existing uh, wetlands or hydro that's in the area, I think they are really meeting the intent of the, of the buffer. I don't think additional buffers really needed in this situation. Okay. You know, I would also Thank add you so much. That, and I'd also mm -hmm. add that the property is, you can see from this drawing here, in the southeast southeast corner of the property, we're, we're over 400 feet, our property line, to the uh, industrial piece that's there now. Okay. And so we, we, I feel pretty good about the buffer that's been there. That was, that was you know, some of the comments and questions asked. And I, I felt, you know, if you have a 150-foot buffer and it's all creeks and wetlands, uh, undisturbed natural buffer, usually they're pretty thick. And um, so we, plus this piece that's, that's left, that's, that's in this area here, I don't know if you can see on my screen still, um, but it, there's, a, there's a lake here. The access has to come from up here. I'm not sure how they're gonna get around the lake. Then there's a creek that runs down through here. And then there's another creek that runs down through here. And so if you put a 150 foot buffer on that, the only thing that's left is this little piece right here. And that's, again, that would be a several hundred feet away from our property line. And on top of that, if you go back to the um, PowerPoint, you can see um, you know, this whole heart of this area is unusable to us anyway. And this back here is all wetlands you know, even going on to their property. So there's not much left on this piece to develop and it's a pretty good distance from ours. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for answering both of you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions for, for the commissioners? Any more questions that Christian may have? Then can I take a, get a motion on this uh, RZ? 21-008. May I get a motion? Mr. Chair, I'd like to offer a motion to approve uh, the land use permit uh, petition for RZ 21-008. You have a second? A second. All uh, all point, point of order, are you, are you recommending approval with conditions or just approval? I apologize. Let me restate that motion, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind. Okay. I'd like to offer a motion to approve the land use petition RZ21008 uh, based on the staff's recommendations uh, with the conditions provided. You get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. Thank you very much, Commissioner. If you could stop sharing your screen, Rob, I can go on to the next item. I will do so. Thank you so much, Jim. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Is that good? Yep, we're all good. <laughs> all right. I guess we're ready to go on to the next item here. Uh, this is text uh, modification 21009, dealing with special events, temporary outdoor events, late night establishments, and similar uses. Um, this is involving a amendment to chapter four of the alcoholic beverages and chapter 27 of the zoning ordinance to redefine and regulate special events. Uh, really what I call sort of entertainment related land uses altogether. What we're trying to do in this text amendment is to address a lack of definition of terms related to the events and temporary uh, licensing, as well as the lack of sort of supplemental use regulations for such uses. One thing I've realized is coming in as planning director is that we get a lot of these requests uh, and it's, it has been a challenge for staff in order to make sure that we can address it properly. Uh, uh, if, if uh, 
this really, this problem stems from two things. One is the fact that uh, to properly coordinate any kind of special event or activity that goes on in the city, we have to coordinate with the Cap County Police, Fire Marshal, Sanitation, the Health Department. Because if you think we're bringing together a lot of people, particularly in an outdoor event, say like a concert or a festival, you got to make sure that it's safe in terms of, uh, you know, just people coming in and out of the site, making sure that there's proper sanitation, making sure that the food trucks or whatever there is, you know, is, is good quality. Uh, you also have issues dealing with alcoholic beverages on the site and whether or not you allow them to be done. So this is trying to address that. Now I can say what we've done here today is I've brought some, uh, I like to say I'm kind of setting the stage for potentially additional text amendments you may see in the coming months, but I think this will go a long way toward addressing some of the overall concerns that we have. Um, the first one we, we are recommending as staff, and we've worked with our the city attorney's office on this, is removal of section 4.2.5 in the alcoholic beverages section of the ordinance, which allows temporary permits. This is to be consistent with what, quite frankly, a lot of other jurisdictions do. Uh, it would also require that the applicant basically hire a caterer or a bartender, you know, they would come in and they would have their own license or they would have their own license already on site. So, Removing this, quite frankly, is putting this more in line with what other jurisdictions do and also uh, would help speed up the process of permitting altogether. So we're recommending removal of that section. Uh, we're also updating uh, the terms for restaurants, saying that basically a restaurant is an eating and drinking establishment, uh, just making sure that that's clear. And then we've offered a uh, recommended definition of eating and drinking establishments, uh, which says that eating and drinking establishments being those establishments whose primary purpose is to derive income from the sale of food and drink, including malt beverages, wine, and distilled spirits consumed primarily within the principal building without a drive in or drive through component, where such establishment is open for use by patrons beyond 2 30 a.m. Entertainment shall be incidental there too. Uh, it sounds like, you know, it, it's quite a you know, in addition to it, but this would go a long way toward us making sure uh, or addressing the problem that we have where like say a restaurant comes in and then later on we find out from code enforcement, they're really operating more like a nightclub or they're really operating more, you know, like a special event venue uh, facility. Uh, by defining these uses more strictly and, uh, and more concisely, we can make sure that when they apply for a business license, then indeed we can regulate and say, no, I'm sorry, you're an eating and drinking establishment. You're not a late night establishment or that sort of thing. So that's the reason for the addition of that. Nightclub, uh, again, we are recommending revision of uh, the definition. Uh, the current definition says means a commercial establishment dispensing alcoholic beverages for consumption on the premises and in which dancing and musical entertainment is allowed where music may be live, disc jockey, karaoke, or not acoustic. We're Changing this to say a place of entertainment open at night, serving food or liquor uh, with all booths and tables unobstructed and open to view, dispensing alcoholic beverages, and which music, dance, or entertainment is conducted with or without a floor show. The principal business of a nightclub shall be entertaining, and the serving of alcoholic beverages shall be incidental thereto. So it's fairly similar to the other one, but again, it's, it's cleaning up the language and making sure that it's uh, more enforceable. Uh, we've also uh, added some additional definitions for special event facilities, uh, making a distinction between no more than 100 persons and, uh, or I should say small or large, uh, using 100 persons as kind of that dividing point. This again gets to the uh, amount of coordination we have to do with other DeKalb departments. That's the reason for that distinction. And then we've added a definition of smoking lounge, which we didn't have in the code right now. Smoking lounge means an establishment which sells tobacco and or promotes the smoking of tobacco products or other substance on its premises. The term smoking lounge includes, but is not limited to cigar lounges, hookah cafes, tobacco lounges, tobacco clubs, or tobacco bars. Now associated with that, of course, we've added uh, some additional uh, revised supplemental language. Uh, one, for the temporary outdoor event permit, we've added a requirement that the property owner, uh, uh, we have approval on site and the traffic control plan is approved by the fire marshal. Uh, we also make a recommendation that we uh, eliminate the limitation on such events only occurring two times a year. And this really came out because of the new Black Wall Street petitions. We actually got uh, several, you know, it seems like every time a major holiday was coming up, we were getting a rec, uh, you know, an application for them to hold an event. 
And honestly, the city, we didn't see anything wrong with them holding such a event. We just want to make sure that we have proper coordination, like we have the 30 days notice is required to properly coordinate with the Cap County. So from a city staff point of view, as long as the applicants are giving us enough time to coordinate, I don't care how many times a year, or we don't care how many times a year they actually come forward. We just want to make sure that it's done properly and it's done in the proper order. Um, in terms of eating and drinking establishments, uh, we're adding a supplemental use requirement that any establishment that serves food and drink, but which operates as another use under Chapter 4 of the Alcoholic Code, and again, that's the nightclubs and all those other things, with separate parking regulations, shall follow the parking regulations of Chapter 27 applicable to that use. Again, this is trying to avoid having restaurants or other things operate as something that they're not. Uh, and making sure that indeed the facility is designed properly to handle what, the, the, what they're proposing to do. And then for smoking lounges, uh, which we had the new definition on, we were saying that they would be subject to the following restrictions. Smoking of hookah in any establishment that serves alcohol or food shall be prohibited. Uh, hours of operation shall not extend past 11 p.m. and shall not, shall not serve patrons under the age of 19 or as restricted by Georgia statute. So that concludes the staff's presentation. These are all the recommendations we have regard to our, to, uh, well, excuse me, this should say TMOD, <laughs> TMOD uh, 21009. Any questions from? Any, any commissioner, commissioners, do you have questions? I have nine times. I'd like to ask, uh, who came up with these extended time? I mean, these times, does that mean I may have missed something here that these places are gonna close at 11 o'clock? Those, yeah, those are established already in the city uh, ordinances. Uh, they've already been up there, but late night establishments uh, right now, actually the city allows them all the way out to, I believe, I wanna say 3.30. Yeah, I uh, thought, I was, I thought it was at a meeting we, that we have a, something like that. Right. And, and we'll be coming back to you with some recommendations about that. One of the uh, things, you know, as I presented to city council was that they're interested very much in establishing potentially an entertainment district where we might limit those late night hours to certain areas of the city. But that's not part of this text amount at this time. We're just right now trying to define it and make sure that we've got, some, you know, some clear distinction between what each of those uses are in terms of the code. Was anything, did anything in particular come in where you felt the need to revise these re uh, uh, regulations? Yeah, we get a lot of requests for, well, again, New Black Wall Street was coming in regularly, so we saw right. a need to remove that restriction on that. We also have, uh, there's a bikers club called Born Losers, uh, which is up in the industrial area that comes by all the time. They're really sort of a temporary outdoor event venue, and they're it's supposed to a private club, so that was one of the reasons we we looked at this, but yeah, we, we get these kind of, we've had several restaurants and stuff and, and nightclubs that honestly, if you look at their business license, they're not really a nightclub They're They got a business license for a restaurant, but they're operating late night and they're, uh, they're regularly coming in for requests. Uh, so, I mean, there's one thing to have be a restaurant and have a temporary event, maybe once or twice a year. It's a whole nother thing. If that same place comes in regularly and we get complaints because, you know, they're, they're really operating more like a nightclub. So <laughs> there are there are there are there are places, establishments in the city where this is taking place. I'm not going to call them out by name necessarily, but uh, uh, that this is what we're trying to address. And again, I, I, I will say we will be coming back with you probably with some additional recommendations, uh, particularly with regard to the entertainment district and stuff. But we want to at least get these on the books and go ahead and get the discussion started. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'll take a motion to open up to, to a public hearing. May I have a Make a motion that we open up for public hearing. May I have a second? I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. We'll take all comments that are for this item public. Open for public hearing. 
in favor of. Any public comments? None? Four? Are there any public hearing comments against? I take a, make a motion that we close public hearing. Mr. Chair, I offer a motion that we close public hearing at this time. I yeah, second I was, that motion. I second that motion. All in favor? Signify by saying. Aye. Aye. Public Aye. hearing is public hearing is closed. Uh, commissioners, uh, do you have any comments? I don't I have, have none, any Mr. Comments. Chair. Pardon me? I have none. District 2. District 5 has none. I don't. District 4 have no comments. Add for motion. Can I get a motion on this? Mr. Chair, I, I offer a motion that we approve the TMOD 21009 per the staff's recommendation. May I have a second, second on it? So moved. So it's been approved that it's been. Motion and seconded that we vote on TMOD 221009. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No opposed? Motion's carried. Okay. Thank you. Our next case is TMOD 21010 uh, or 10. <laughs> um, this one is dealing with uh, clarification of the use table. Uh, it was allowed by right in the zoning districts, particularly with regard to uses in industrial areas. I'll note that in the public hearing notice, we did say to remove inconsistencies in land use terms and definitions. Uh, this is one thing that we tried, we actually started doing, and it's kind of like opening Pandora's box. As soon as we did, we found a number of issues we had to address. So Again, I'll be coming back with you again probably next month with much more details on the inconsistency of land use terms. But in the meantime, we did want to go ahead and address some of the big issues, which is, again, getting at this problem of conflicts between residential and industrial land uses is removing a lot of the residential uses that are in the industrial zones or allowed there, as well as uh, creating a prohibited use list, which will uh, take out of the city the possibility of some very unsuitable heavy industrial uses. So um, first of all, the prohibited use list that we're recommending to be added, and this is uh, uh, this list of 16 different uses, which we feel are really pretty intense. Uh, you know, this includes distillation of bones or glue manufacturer, dry cleaning plant, dye works, explosives manufacturer storage, fat rendering or fertilizer manufacturer, fuel manufacturer, incineration of garbage or refuse or toxic waste, landfills, uh, paper or pulp manufacturer, petroleum or inflammable liquids, radioactive material handling, uh, rubber or plastics manufacturing, thermal treatment technology or hazardous toxic materials, smelting of copper, iron, zinc, or ore, sugar refineries, and tire retreading or recapping. Again, these are all uses right now that are currently permitted in either the M or M2 zoning classification. And we're recommending that really they're not suitable to the character of the city and that they be prohibited. Uh, changes in the permitted use table in the industrial zone. If you look in your packet, there are detailed lists of strike through underline of what's permitted and not permitted. Uh, currently, there are certain uses are recommended in the industrial zone, residential uses that we're recommending be removed as permitted use. That includes mobile homes, multifamily dwellings, live work units, dormitories, hospitals or accessory ambulatory services, pawn shops, title loan, check cashing, primary and accessory, personal service establishments, uh, alternative energy production, we're recommending that that be limited only to uh, clean energy production. Uh, chemical manufacturing, we're recommending that 
uh, a slope be required if, he, if EPD emissions permits are required. And then general aviation, we're recommending that to also be a slope as, as, as though, rather than just having it permitted by right. And then asphalt plant, we recommend that that require a slope. Now there are certain uses that aren't shown in industrial areas that we feel ought to be added. And that includes commercial lot parking, commercial garages and fabricated metal manufacturing. Uh, and with that, that concludes staff recommendations. I'm open to any comments or questions. Mr. Chair, I have a couple of questions. Oh, okay, Commissioner. Go ahead with your questions. Uh, Mr. Somerville. Yes. Um, just for clarity, now you're saying that the code currently allows for these things and you're asking for them to be removed. Correct. correct. But and to actually also, be listed out in the code as prohibited. So it's it's not a matter of they're just not even on the tables. We're just saying that we don't want it in the city. Okay. okay. That's just the use right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go back to the other list, though. Oh, the okay, one through okay, 16 these are, these, is prohibited. Bulleted. You, you saying, want the prohibited one or this one here? They are it shows allowed, allowed and you're asking for them to be removed. Industrial. Am I clear on that? I just want to get some clarity. That's all. I'm sorry. What? No. What? Which screen do you want me to show? This one that you have up right now. Oh, okay. Okay. You're saying that you want these. You're recommending that these all be removed. They'd be removed from the industrial zones. They would still be allowed in the residential zones or the commercial zones, but okay. we don't see the need, for example, multifamily dwellings in an industrial area. If we're trying to limit or mitigate potential impacts between residential and industrial uses. Why allow mobile homes or multifamily dwellings or live work units in the M or M2 district? They will still be allowed in the other districts. Okay, and then the other, the ones that are in blue, uh -huh. you're asking th that those be added. Yes, that they be allowed as permitted. Because I mean, clearly like a commercial parking lot or commercial garage or these things, I mean, these are, obvious uses that you would expect, I would think, in the industrial area. Right, and my concern would be if mm -hmm. we were to approve this based on you adding uh, the parking and all of that, because what, what we don't want to see is crime starting to infest in these areas. And a lot of times that in trucking areas, that's what happens. And so uh, is there a way that we could possibly add slups to these three? Or, or just as sure, a sure, as opposed to but permitted by right, having permitted by yes. slop, sure. Yes, because oh, yeah, I'm concerned, concerned about the by right number one to begin with. But okay. if we can add slops, then we can kind of address it case by case, I would think. Yeah, and I will clarify, I don't know if you recall the earlier discussions we had, I think it was oh, TMOD okay. 21006. You know, we, uh, they're currently in the city charter. There is an exemption for industrial uses in the industrial zone, or is they that they're exempt from slops. Now, my guess is there will probably be a movement in the spring uh, to revise the city charter to remove that exemption. But there's nothing wrong with us going ahead and requiring it in the code in its sort of anticipation of that exemption being removed altogether. And of course, you could argue that a commercial lot parking is not really an industrial use; it's really a commercial use. So now the last one, fabricated metal manufacturer, that probably, that would be an industrial use. But yeah, we certainly can offer that knowing that there is an exemption currently in the city charter that quite likely is, is more than likely going to be changed in the coming, you know, in the coming year. But of course, that's a matter right. for the General right. Assembly. Yeah. Right. I'm aware of it. And thank you for pointing that out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jim, I, I have a quick question and I had to step away for a moment, so I may have missed uh, what you discussed on this. Now, these are not established places that are going to be removed now, are they? No, no, this, this is just relating to if any of these uses are already currently in the zone, uh, uh -huh. that doesn't, doesn't mean that they're also going to go away. It just means that there'll be legal non-conforming uses. Or they, and, and that happens all the time throughout the city. You'll see what I call grandfathered uses, uses already in place uh -huh. before, you know, a, a, a restriction was put in place. So it just means that if they are there currently and we say you're no longer allowed, that would mean that they can no longer expand or uh, improve the, the uh, site other than just 
maintenance uh, altogether. So, it, it, but and what else? But what it primarily gets at is new construction. Anything new from it could come in. Because the one that stands out is on this, this bullet point on this hospital uh, our accessory huh? ambulance service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, potentially I could see where you might have an ambulance service in there, but you really want a hospital in an industrial zone, you know, and to me it's more of a commercial or office institutional kind of use. Mm -hmm. um, well, do we have any of this stuff there? Uh, well, mm -hmm. when you do have a hospital, but I don't think it's in the industrial zone. I believe it's in the commercial zone right now. I'd have to double check that, but that, that's sort of something we, we, could, we could verify for sure. It would just mean that the hospital... Uh, again, would, would this be a legal market for use if they're in the industrial zone? I don't believe they are right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. No, they're I'll not. I'll double check that. Though. I'll make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Any other commissioners? I'll take a motion to open public hearing. I make a motion that we open up for public hearing. Second. There's been motion in fact that we open up for public hearing. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed to open up a public hearing. We'll, we'll take Take all comments that are for this item. Any comments for from the public? Any comments uh, against from the from the public? Now take a motion to close public hearing. Mr. Chair, I offer a motion that we close public hearing at this time on this particular uh, petition. A second. It's been motion and seconded that we close public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's been passed. Public hearing is closed. Mr. Chair, I'd like to offer a motion if I'm in order to approve uh, land use petition TMOT 21010 uh, with the uh, expressed revisions for permitted use and to include the uh, recommended slops for the commercial parking uh, in conjunction with the staff's recommendations. We have a second. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's been passed. Motion is carried. Okay, great. We'll move on to the next item. We've only got two more. Uh, this is TMOD 2111, uh, which is discouraging residential conversion of industrial buildings and residential construction industrial zones. Uh, again, this is part of, again, of a, of a much bigger issue of how do we help mitigate uh, potential impacts between uh, residential construction in or near industrial zones. Uh, this one is getting at the actual language that's in the zoning ordinance that it encourages that. And we're recommending we go ahead and remove it. Um, what we're specifically recommending is that uh, in the statement of purpose and intent uh, language of both the M district and the M2 district, which we'll see on the other page, that we delete uh, subsection G, which says the purpose and intent of the M light industrial district is to allow or converting certain industrial buildings in the M district to multifamily dwellings. We're just saying delete that all right all the way around. And then, of course, uh, there's also the conversion of buildings to residential uh, prohibited. We're recommending that uh, the section specific criteria for the converting of, of these districts, uh, you know, just says our right to prohibit uh, such conversions. And here for the same reasons above. Uh, we're doing the same thing for M2. I mean, it's the same way it's up there. There's also language in there regarding uh, the current 
one says that any negative influence, noise impacts, or excuse me, let me just back up on that one. The subsection code says that any negative noise impact from uses in M2 heavy industrial district should be contained in the in the district, in that district, and not create noise problems for adjoining districts. We're saying that we would change that and just say that they need to be compliant with the noise ordinances already there should be uh, any anything that's unreasonable uh, to decide. This is just making sure that it's in conformance with other parts of the code. Uh, the term any is kind of broad, so you know it kind of picks up everything. Uh, but this would just say it's, con it's consistent with the noise ordinance already there. And then of course the conversion of buildings to the M2 heavy industrial district to residential uses would also be prohibited uh, altogether. Uh, and again, you know, if you look back, there were modifications we just passed or you just recommended for approval in the use table and they included these uses that uh, would not be there. But we're just reiterating here for, for the sake of clarification. But again, it's an effort to uh, really limit or discourage residential development in industrial zones. And that includes steps or recommendations of this item right now. Again, I think that coming in November, we'll be coming back with you with some detailed recommendations on uh, uh, offer requirements, that sort of thing, kind of similar to what we discussed in the previous seven days. Any questions? Mr. Somerville, does this comply mm -hmm. with um, the issues that took place at 2975 Evans Mill Road? 2975, oh, you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> is it, this, now they're talking about okay. um, Does this comply with the events that are going there in terms of? Well, my concern um, is this. Um, uh -huh. Was this a completed um, discussion? Was the discussion completed with the council with regard to this specific um, TMOD? Discussion completed with regard to this. It's still ongoing, but we're yeah, addressing like here some the obvious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what we're addressing here are the things that were kind of general consensus that the council agreed to. Again, it's kind of the low hanging fruit. I mean, particularly with regards to the encouragement language in there. And uh, I agree, like I say, we will be coming back with some more detailed recommendations with regard to this issue. So the issue is by no means closed. Uh, but we did want to go ahead and yeah, address kind of what I consider the low hanging fruit or the things that are real obvious that everyone seems to agree to. You know, in terms of vision and what's going on. So, um, okay, because I would probably yeah. have to go back and revisit the uh, noise, the noise ordinance also. With the okay. Oh, okay. Good point. Good point. Yeah. 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 Sorry. If. Go on. I'm sorry. So I understand. So you're you're saying that language about any be something that you might have some issues with, um, or you yes. better keep it in place. I got you. Yes, sir. But we certainly, we certainly could keep the current language now and then again address it later in a later time if you want to in terms of that language in particular, if you have concerns. Um, it's more than just that concern. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, but, uh, okay. But you did point out some very good concerns, but yes. Okay. Any other comments? Any other comments from the commissioners? Any questions from the commissioners? I'll take a motion to open up public hearing on this uh, item. Mr. Chair, I offer a motion that we open up for uh, public comments. A second. It's been motion and seconded. Uh, for public comments, all in favor? Signify Aye. 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 It's been passed. Public hearing is closed. Uh, um, point of order, Mr. Chair? Yes. I believe we just opened up public comment. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. sorry. That's okay. okay. Any public hearings? Uh, we'll take a, all comments that are 
for this item from the public? Any comments from the public? Did any comments against this item? And I'll make a motion. Have, Mr. Chair, I offer a motion that we close public comments at this time. Yes. Get, get a second. I second. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Chair, if I'm in order, I'd like to offer a motion that we defer this particular item back to council. It can, can I get a second then? Can I get a second? I Mr. second Per Hollis District 4, second. Mr. Chair, this is Alicia Thompson, the city attorney. Go ahead. I just wanted to um, get some clarification. Was this item already um, with city council or is it, this is the first time that it's being um, heard in this meeting? Four, but first time. Okay. Because um, if we're gonna defer, we, it, it would be deferred to a new, another planning commission meeting. Was this, uh, was the deferral meant to, so that city council can um, review the, the item or can, if I can just get some clarification on that. Yes, Ms. Thompson, um, from the last meeting that I attended when I overheard the council discussing this, I, I do believe it was still left open-ended. So it may not have been completed even though we're trying to revise bits and pieces of it. Um, I just felt that the council had not completed what they were doing. And so we wanted, I personally wanted to get their feedback and finish whatever the intent and their purposes that they had started working on before we entertain it altogether. So okay. it could come back to us if, if you think that's appropriate, but I believe it was still left open-ended with the council. Okay, so it's something that the council had already um, begun discussing. Okay, that's that what is I was correct. Think, yes, ma'am. Yeah, and it is my intent, I'll say, to bring it back to council this month, uh, coming up with our upcoming meetings. And I, I think that's perfectly acceptable. Well, ours, we'll just kind of just more flesh the bones and then come back to you in November with more details. It's kind of what I'm hearing based upon yeah. what the council has to say. Yeah, yeah and um, I mean, to my knowledge, uh, council has the, you know, has the right and um, the power to um, hear items that have been deferred, um, whether it be deferred to another, you know, planning commission meeting or, because when you defer something, you want to defer it to time of where it's supposed to go. So it's, it's probably just more of a uh, wordplay and, but either way, council has the power and authority to, to, um, to review this again, um, if, if that's what, um, if that's what's chosen to do. So this would be second read or would it be first, second read or just a deferral? This is, I believe this would be a deferral because they haven't, they haven't, it hasn't formally been presented to council other than just discussion of how they want to address the issue. So I'm taking this as we'll bring this back to council for further discussion before deferring to the next planning commission meeting, which will bring back a more detailed recommendation or one that at least has, you know, like I say, it's been discussed a little more openly. And thank you, Mr. Somerville. That is exactly what I was hoping would happen. Okay. Well, well we, ha we have a motion on the floor uh, to uh, defer. And we had a second, Mr. Chair. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, any opposed? It's been, it's been approved. All right, the last text modification is 21012, which is dealing with the amendments to the gravel parking lot provisions. Um, Again, dealing with Article Six, um, which is, which is uh, 
uh, an amendment to the code that was uh, actually adopted a couple of years back. Uh, there were some concerns by the public about the overall appearance of the existing gravel parking lots in the area, particularly fencing requirements and tree buffers, that sort of thing. Uh, what we found is you know, certain uh, locations have done a good job of maintaining the fencing and some have not. So we want to make sure that we can kind of beef up the requirements in the code regarding these facilities so that um, you know, that again, they present a better aesthetic to the community overall. Um, the examples of the pictures I have here on the right are actually, they're not truck parking lots, but they are examples of some industrial uses in the uh, area uh, where they've used uh, sort of like corrugated metal fencing uh, that again is, uh, it presents sort of a better image to the street. Now what's different between what you see in these images and what's required in the current code and what we're recommending for approval is that uh, you would also have a landscape buffer around the fence, uh, a double row of trees that would help uh, even screen the look of the fence from the road as well. So the proposal that we're offering is to subsection B10 in the uh, code. Uh, it's saying that the fencing along there would indeed have to be these uh, opaque fences, uh, which are corrugated metal. Uh, they would also uh, cannot be made of chain link or wood. Uh, and they must be 10 foot high, which ought to offer a good screening for what's behind there. Uh, and then, of course, vegetation between the street and fences will have to be 100% evergreen. Uh, right now, I think it allows for just undisturbed buffer. Uh, and at least six foot high or two inch caliber at the time of planting. And these buffers would have to be mulched, watered, and maintained and replaced when necessary. Uh, we're also adding the requirements that all existing parking lots would have to be upgraded to this new standard no later than January 1st, 2025. So we're hoping that this will help address some of the public concerns regarding uh, these uses and help clean up the overall look of the industrial area altogether. So that is uh, with my uh, presentation. I'm going to open for any questions you have may have. I have no questions, Mr. Chair. No questions, District 4, Pearl Hollis. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, no questions. Mr. Chair, I offer a motion that we go into public comments. I second the motion. Did we lose uh, Mr. Edie's? Is he muted? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All in favor? Signify by. Aye. 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 It is, it, uh, any opposed? It, is, it has been carried, most been carried. Public hearing is open. Any comments? I have a question for Mr. Somerville. Do you believe that this TMOD is, the recommendations that the staff are making, do you believe that this is not an open end? I mean, this one is pretty much covered? Okay. Yeah, I think this was pretty much covered. I didn't see any concerns from the council about this. Everyone seemed to agree that's out there. Uh, I think the only thing uh, that you know may be different to what I present to council is I'll probably do a little more research about how many of these, you know, uh, parking facilities are out there. We do, we do have a uh, inventory that was done last June, so I want to say they're like uh, about 15 to 18 that we're aware of. Um, but I'm, as far as in terms of the recommendations, I don't I don't see any changes. I think they're in line with whatever council. Point point of order. This is open for public hearing for the public. True. Yeah, we used to vote for public hearing, so there are any questions from the public. I take a motion to close public hearing. 
So Hold moved. It. Can I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any I opposed? didn't hear a second, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. But were there a second on that? I heard someone say so moved. I'm not sure who said it. That was so moved on the motion. Oh, okay. Well, I second the motion. All, all four in favor? Aye. Bye -bye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Chair, I offer a motion that we approve TMOT 21-012 as staff has recommended. I second per Hollis District 4. It has been moved and seconded that we are, uh, approve TMOD-21-012. All in favor? Aye. 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 All, any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Uh, Chair? Yes. I'd like to offer a motion that we adjourn this meeting at this time. Second the motion, Pearl Hollis, District 4. All in favor? Aye. 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 All approved. Uh, anybody opposed? Motion carried. Adjourn. We are Good adjourned. night, everybody. everybody.